In this video I'm going to show you how you can take tracking data from your phone, import to Blender and use on your virtual camera to get very realistic camera movements in your renders. So as an example we're going to set up this scene and we're going to do some tracking with our phone and we're going to use that to create this kind of moody, dark, creepy scene. But this is just an example. Uh, this is a method you can use to create very realistic camera movements and uh, that actually looks like you're in the scene recording with your phone. So let's start off with opening up a new project. So new, general. And of course we're gonna press A to mark all of these things and we're gonna delete them. And to start off with we need something as a reference for scale. So actually I'm gonna use a plugin called Blender Kit which is free. You can go to their website and download this and it's basically a library with a bunch of models, materials, scenes, etc. that you can actually import to Blender right away from the viewport. So uh, in the models tab I'm just gonna search for human and if you do, do not have a subscription for this plugin you only get to use the uh, free model and assets and those are the ones that do not have the lock on them. So I'm just going to use this low poly human, doesn't matter really. Uh, the only thing that matters is that the scale is correct. So if I were to take the measure tool and measure this guy, you can see the scale is pretty good. He's about 1.6 meters tall, which is quite an accurate human size. So then we want to import a plane as the ground and scale up that just a bit doesn't have to be too big and for this scene we're using a mirror to actually show off what you can do with the motion tracking of your phone and we're doing a really cool thing where we actually show the phone in the video as if I were in the scene and actually filming in the, the, uh, the render so to do that we're gonna import a mirror and a mirror is quite easy to model but we're not going to do any unnecessary steps and we're going to use a free model to download. So let's search for a mirror and the one I used in my render is this one. So let's import that. It's in the wrong direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it 90 degrees and to do that you're just going to mark it and press R and press X to angle on the X axis and if you hold down control and drag you can change the angle with an increment of 10 so 90 degrees then press G to move it around and we're gonna move it on the Z axis and the Y axis now this mirror is quite small so we're gonna press S and drag to scale it up and we're just gonna use our eyes to see if this is somewhat a an accurate size for the human and that looks pretty good so now if we go into uh, material preview we can see here that we get some reflections from the mirror it already has the necessary materials for the reflections and all that and for this render we're actually gonna change the render engine to cycles and if you have a GPU select that uh, and then if we go into uh, render view we can see what that looks like so now this scene looks quite dark but we're gonna use a method of actually trying to use the flash on the phone as a dynamic and live uh, lighting technique so it actually looks like I'm filming with the phone with the flash on so we're not gonna stress out about the lighting for now so now we need to create the tracking data from the phone and what we're gonna use is an app called CamTrack AR now this is uh, an app that only works for iOS devices like an iPhone so uh, I do not know if there's any version of this for Android or if there's another app that does the same for Android 
um, there might be some development going on uh, where they will release this for Android. But for now, this is only for our iOS devices. So download this app on your phone and then we're going to go into the app and do the actual tracking. So when we go into the app, you can see that every all the controls are horizontal, but we're doing this vertically. It still works. And just ignore my dog there. Uh, what you want to do is you want to point to the floor and then set floor with the button on the left top corner. And then start recording and do your camera movement. Now this records video as well, but we're just going to use the, the camera tracking data. So then when you're done doing the tracking, you need to just stop recording. Now all the files are saved on your phone as a file and click share on the file and then you can send it to your computer using email or airdrop or whatever works for you. And then we're going to go into edit preferences and we're going to go to the add-ons tab and press install. We're going to install a custom plugin for the app that we're using so that we can import the tracking data correctly. So go to the place where you stored your files from the app. Now what you want to do is you want to extract the zip file that you got from the app. You want to go into that folder and you want to select the blender hit film importer.py. It's, it's a Python uh, plugin. So press that and install add-on. Mine is already installed so I just need to activate it. Now save your preferences so you don't have to do this again when you create a new project. Exit out of this window and we're gonna go to file, import and now we get a new a new option here that says HitFilm AR tracking data. So we're gonna select that and now you want to find the tracking data from the phone again. So go to the folder that you saved the tracking, da tracking data in and go to the extracted folder and we're gonna select the HFCS file which is the, the actual tracking data. Press that and import. Now what happens when we import the tracking data is that we get a virtual camera, a new camera in Blender. And if we do play this back, we can see that the tracking is working and the camera is actually moving with the movement that we recorded. Now, if we were to go into the camera view, so first of all, you need to assign this camera as a standard camera. And how you do that is you go into the scene properties and on the camera, you select the AR camera. Now, if we press zero on the numpad, we go into the camera view. And if we play this back, this looks like a very good uh, camera movement and good camera tracking. But the issue is that First of all, the camera is pointing at the wrong direction. So we're pointing at this direction while we need to be pointing at that direction. And you may be thinking, well, just, you know, select the camera, press R and rotate it around. That doesn't work. If you were to play it back again, then it would just reset to the original position. So how we solve this is we're actually going to use an empty object uh, which we're going to parent to the camera and use to move around the camera without affecting the actual tracking uh, keyframes of, of the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift and then right click on the point here on the camera and that sets the 3D cursor to the top of the camera. So when we press uh, Shift A and import a, an empty object, the empty object is placed exactly on the, the base of the camera sensor, which is exactly what we want. Now to parent the camera to our empty, we just need to select the camera, then hold down Shift, select the empty, press Control P, to parent and select object. Now if we select the empty and we press G to move it around, we actually move the camera as well. 
So now we can use this empty and place the camera exactly where we want. So I'm going to press 7 on the numpad to get a top view. And I'm going to press G to move it to where the human head is uh, roughly. Then we're going to go into side view with numpad 3. Press G and move it on the Z axis like this. Uh, what we can do now is we can actually remove this human as we don't need him anymore or her um, and <clears throat> we're gonna look at the direction of the camera so if we just play this a bit we get a better idea on where the camera is actually pointing and an easy way to do this uh, is actually if you go into if you press numpad 0 and go into camera view with the empty still selected you can rotate the camera while you're uh, seeing what the camera actually sees. So there we go. And we're actually going to move it down just a tiny bit. So we're just trying to look for, you know, placing the camera roughly where the uh, what the eyes of the person would actually see, so the right height of the person. Now, one thing you may notice is that when we go into camera view, and we go out of camera view again. Our viewport is quite strange. Um, we kind of rotate at 90 degrees and when we're trying to move around it's kind of the controls are kind of inverted. This is because the camera is also rotated 90 degrees because this is a horizontal image that is recorded by the phone. So to fix that we just need to press any number on the numpad to re reset the um, viewport angle and then we are back to normal. So <clears throat> now we can play this back and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Just one issue that the camera is going through the mirror here which we do not want. So we can actually move this back just a bit. Maybe like that and see what that looks like. Uh, and we're kind of on an angle here, so let's fix that by just rotating it a bit. There we go. So with these few easy steps, we get the camera movement into Blender, and we can actually start, you know, rendering out uh, realistic camera movements in our scene. So let's take take this a step further and actually create a scene that's kind of interesting. So the concept for this is that we want it to look like we're actually there holding a phone that is recording the footage. So for this concept uh, I made kind of a creepy scene to make it look like you know we just woke up in a place that is unknown, it's dark, there's just a creepy mirror that we can you know see the camera through and for some reason we're uh, invisible as well because there's no human actually holding the phone so <clears throat> to do this it's actually very easy but uh, I think it's uh, a quite uh, cool effect uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a phone model you can either you know model the phone yourself or do the go the lazy route which I almost always do uh, with finding uh, a pre-made model to download. So we're gonna use Blender Kit again and just search for iPhone. And I found that uh, there are some very good models here that we can use, uh, but my favorite is this one, the uh, 12 Pro Max Blue. So let's import that. Now the first thing that we want to look out for is the uh, scale of the phone. So if we move this to roughly to the position of the camera like this and then we want to rotate it 9 degrees. There we go and if we go to top view we can move it exactly to where the camera is. Oh, it's upside down. There we go. Now for this, the actual camera lenses or sensors are located on the top right of the phone. So we need to align the virtual camera with the iPhone camera roughly. 
there we go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the phone or the empty that the phone is parented to then the camera press ctrl p and select object now if we were to move the camera the phone is following all of its movements so when we play this back the phone looks like it's actually recording the footage which is quite cool so in this stage we do have a scene we do have some tracking movements we could render this out and get realistic camera movements from this scene but just to make it more interesting we're gonna do a few touches to make it a bit more cinematic and, and more interesting to look at so first of all what we want to do is we want to change the floor to something that reflects both the mirror and the phone when we look down on the f in the beginning of the recording so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into material properties we're gonna create a new material and we're just gonna use the regular principle uh, shader here and I wanna bring down the roughness and up with the metallic to get these nice reflections on the floor and we're also gonna take the base color and bring the exposure down to make it a bit more dark and moody maybe uh, just a bit more there we go now if you were to look at the reflections here we can see that we get really good and realistic reflections but actually not because realism actually almost all the time lies in the details and with details I mean that if there is a floor here that maybe has been used before there's always some imperfections in that floor that has that distorts the reflection in some way so just to make it more realistic we're gonna add some imperfections by using uh, some smudge textures with the plane selected we want to go into this shading tab and we want to add in an image texture so by pressing shift a and press search we can search for image texture and we're gonna press open and select our texture so I have actually downloaded uh, a, a surface imperfection pack I do not remember who it was from if some of you know please leave a comment so that I can credit the guys that actually did these textures but if you want some textures of your own just google surface imperfection textures free and there's a bunch of free textures that you can use and download so the one I want to use is called smudges and we're just gonna pick one of these uh, any of them should be fine and now if we go into render view and we were to connect the color to the roughness we can see that we get these smudges here which is quite cool but I think these are quite overboard we need to tone it down just a bit to make it you know a more more realistic so first of all what we can do is we can press ctrl T with the smudges node selected and that gives us a mapping and texture coordinate node so with this we can use the scale and just scale this up or down if we want bigger or smaller smudges so for this situation I think that is pretty fine maybe a bit smaller like that and then I just want to tone down the smudges just a little bit by adding a, a brightness and contrast node so we're gonna place this here and just bring down the brightness just a bit okay so I think that's fine we can adjust this later if needed what we're gonna do in next step is we're gonna bring in some light to actually illuminate our scene and first of all this scene is still too bright 
to actually get the moody feeling that we want so what we what we want to do is we want to go into the world tab and we're just gonna turn down the strength on here to absolute zero now when we want to add in the lights and all that kind of stuff we can leave this on like 0.5 or something just to see what we're doing but we need to change that to zero later to get the feel that we want so let's bring in a light and what we want to think about is what is the correct light for simulating the same light that our phones emit so we got point we got sun spot and area a point light is you know it emits from all angles uh, so a, a phone light is you know just emitting light from the camera towards the subject that we're shooting so that's not what we want a sun is absolutely not what we want an area it's you know close but it's not quite we want the one that's called spot that's the closest to an actual phone camera so here we get our light and what we want to do is we want to align this to the actual light on the phone camera so as we did before we're just gonna go into top view we're gonna align this let's just go into layout again by the way and we can we can bring in the strength here or actually we go to material view we go into side view and place it roughly by the camera and let's zoom in here to get a bit more of an accurate placement here now that is pretty good so we got the placement right but of course we need to angle the light so that it corresponds to the f angle of the phone and that looks pretty good uh, we want to make sure that the angle this way is correct as well so if we go into top view again it's not quite right maybe like this there we go so same as before we want to parent this light to the phone so that the light follows the movement of the phone and just to recap what we did we imported the motion from the camera we parent the the, the uh, phone to the camera so that the phone follows the camera movement and now we want to parent the light to the phone so it follows the movement of the phone now same as before we want to select the light then select the empty of the phone press ctrl p and parent to object so now if the camera moves the light moves as well so what we have left is just adjusting the light settings to make it as realistic as we can so we're gonna go into rendered view again and see what it looks like now this is not what we want this looks absolutely terrible so we're gonna do some adjustments on the light to make it look a bit more realistic uh, so with the light selected we're gonna go into the uh, object edit the properties here on the light and we're gonna do some adjustments here so first of all we need to scale down the radius here so that is just covers the actual flash on the camera and this can be a quite tricky task uh, but I think maybe 0.0, .0 zero five can be good yeah that looks quite accurate now if we go into the world tab and we bring down the strength we can take a look at what the light actually does for us maybe we need to increase the power a bit so that it actually emits some light for us Let's go back here and see what it looks like. We actually want to make this light a bit wider, just like the flash on a phone. So there we go. We have a 
some camera movement, we have a phone parented to the camera movement and we have a flashlight for that phone. So what is left to do is just do the actual rendering. So for my render I used cycles and I used optics denoising with a sample rate of about 250 because what you want to keep in mind here that if we use a lot of reflections in the render the render time is going to go up drastically so you want to be careful with how many samples you use as it, it can take days to render this out and if we play this back There we go.